previously on Breath of Fire. Who's that girl with the wings? Ooh, that's Nina. Who's got healing magic for all your aches? Ooh, that's Nina. Who's got two strong soldiers helping her out? Ooh, that's Nina. Who's only... Uh, she can't even fly yet. Uh, crap. I better stop this before I go on a list. Cut it. It's a wrap. Stop everything. Welcome to a fine gaming experience, everyone. Today, we are taking our two favorite characters, Soldier 1 and 2, along with Princess Nina, into the Wizard's Tower. Let's get started, shall we? I should warn everyone now, the encounter rate here is pretty high. This basement is where the wizard has been dumping all his dead experiments. It's at the very start of the tower, and there will be a part later that connects here, so remember the spot. The healing springs and encounter rate make this an ideal early leveling spot, if you so choose. But for the most part, the first and last floors are the only parts of this dungeon being nice to you. The layout on this dungeon is an annoying stair maze, with a few good pieces of loot hidden in the off paths. I'll be grabbing everything in this run, but I recommend skipping the charms. With all the twisting paths, the high encounter rates end up being a major distraction that can make you lose your place. I had a few test runs where I went off course that I'm glad you're not seeing. Thank you. 
Our first mini-boss really knows how to make an introduction. Say hello to Mort, whose original name was Subordinate Uzo. For the most part, this guy is fairly easy, but does hit hard. He has a ton of defense, but low hit points, so using magic damage items like the key work great. I believe this fight is partly to drive home how armor-piercing magic can be. You're crying? There's no crying in baseball. I mean, battle. See, not too bad. And we can heal up right after, making him a pretty minor bump in the road. Capcom had a lot of inspiration for creating this game that I believe shows quite a bit in the end product. I've mentioned their close relationship with Squaresoft, and things like the combat and status screens feel vaguely Final Fantasy-ish. But the spark to this game came from a very unexpected source. In 1988, Surtech Software had revamped a classic series of their own with the revolutionary Wizardry 5. More of a hardcore dungeon crawler, the players were forced to descend into a growingly complex dungeon, full of traps, riddles, and puzzles for the player to solve. To help port this over from PC to the Super Nintendo, Surtech put Capcom on the task. It became an office favorite, and I find this tower level to be a prime example of the influence Wizardry 5 had on this game's production as there's a similar type of stair maze deep in that title. I pick up two moon drops in this dungeon, and there are only two more in the entire game. Using one will recover the entire party's hit points and restore their status. I'll be saving them for a rainy day, but it's a nice safety cushion to give the player this early on.
I was kind of tempted to run the majority of this video at double speed like I've been doing for combat, since I'm in combat so much. Not only do we have to deal with a large number of stairs, but now we have unmarked pits we can jump in. And that room with the bones at the very start of the tower? Jump in the wrong pit and end up back there. One more chest before the next boss nets us a life 2, which revives someone with both full HP and AP. A great find. the sister of that wimp we beat up. Mortia is a better challenge than her brother, but still uses the same high defense motif. In Japan, she was called Subordinate Muzo, making the two of them Uzo Muzo, an idiom referring to a group of worthless people. Think of it as similar to how the villain's henchmen are always screwing up. 
If you really want to take this boss down fast, you can use that bolt and cold stone we saved from the aura cave. Neat little extending bridge. Whoops, that retracted after we crossed. We finally get another healing spring. A welcome find after all those fights and a second boss. A dragon shrine as well if we feel like saving. I guess we made it to the top of the tower. It's got a nice battle background. It's the kidnapped village girls. If all they needed to do was push that button to escape, they really could have left by now. We've got a new enemy type for you guys this episode. Zard is a melee tank with high defense. Magic makes short work of them, a running theme for this tower.
He deploys xenon gas, not to be confused with xenon gas, which interestingly would be somewhat similar in effect, as it's used as an anesthetic. The gas reduced everyone to 1 HP and AP. I don't even have enough to cast a healing spell. The wizard is really just toying with us, waiting for the gas to take full effect. Now that Soldier 2 is running away, we've really pissed him off. He's not standing around waiting, he's kicking our ass. Damn! Well, I guess that's game over, everyone. we get to see the Great Bird Transformation. Not the Queen, but Soldier 2 is the one that finally recruits us to help Nina. Not Soldier 2, he was our favorite character. I'll never forget your name, generic numbered trooper. Will I help? I just woke up, buddy. Give me a few minutes. He's got gas. Sorry, I really can't. But thou must again. Fine. Why put the choice in there, really? A frontal assault. That plan worked so well for Nina. Oh ho! An aerial assault.
Go flock them up. We land on top of the tower area we saw earlier, and get Soldier 3 to help us out. He's got pretty much the same equipment, but he's an old war vet with much higher strength but less agility and vigor. He really didn't hang around for long, did he? If I go back up, he'll rejoin. Another easy spot to grind for XP if you really want. The Boomerang. This is such a sweet find. It's not as strong as our current weapon, but would be about equal to what you'd normally have at this point. Let's get into a fight and see why it's so good. The boomerang is our first physical weapon that hits all enemies. It makes clearing weak enemies much easier, and while the key does a static 30 damage, boomerang types can do much, much more than that as our strength goes up. Zards will drop these cold stones fairly often if you're farming in this area. Make sure we're ready for the boss, not too hurt. Finally facing the wizard, and we're going to beat him in a magic duel. He has high defense like his henchmen, and will constantly buff it higher. I'm going to just chump this guy using stones, but he's not that tough. He's got a few attack spells, but a bolt from a gloom does more damage than from this boss.
And with that, we fly back to the castle. Note that I'm not controlling this. I think the circling is to remind you about Romero and to show off where we'll be going. Let's see how the king is doing now. Ah, he's too fine. With that, Nina becomes our first official party member. She's the only dedicated healer, so having her join early will be useful. If nothing else, it's going to save on herbs and antidotes. We got quite a bit done this episode, I think. And now the tunnel to the east is open so we can go explore more of the world. What lies beyond? Find out next time. If you want easy updates, do the subscribe thing and check out the thread on Something Awful. Take care all.